a man is tired of London, he's tired of life. It's a cliche perhaps, and what is not mentioned is how tiring London can be. That said, it's a phenomenally photogenic city, a place where you can photograph Roman ruins alongside some of the most modern architecture on the planet. Although I now live in Odessa, I was born and bred in London, and during my visits back I will often acquaint myself with some of the more iconic photographic locations. Any ideas? In this video we're going to give you some ideas on the logistics and locations of shooting in London. London is a global gateway served by airlines from every continent. Within Europe there are an abundance of budget airlines serving the city's airports. Talking of airports, there are quite a lot. Five international airports serve London. Heathrow, Gatwick, London City, Luton and Stansted. Budget airlines use the latter four, whilst intercontinental flights will use Heathrow or Gatwick. All airports have fairly well served transport links to London. They are, however, with the exception of London City, some distance from the city centre. Planning is vital. Despite its size, London, out of rush hour, is one of the easiest major cities in the world to get around. The trains, buses and metro services are frequent and highly connected. However, you need to plan in advance what you want to shoot and when. Plan for no more than two locations in a day. One in the early morning to capture the morning light, and a second in the late afternoon and early evening to capture the golden and blue hours. If you are staying in a central location, it may be worth spending a few hours resting between the shoots to make them less tiring. Deciding when to go can be tricky. Despite its reputation, London is not a particularly rainy city. Its weather, however, is extremely changeable and you need to be prepared for that. Perhaps the best time to visit London is in the spring. Temperatures will be pleasant and there's a good chance of some sunny days. Summer can be surprisingly cold or unbearably hot and humid. However, the sheer number of tourists in summer can make the city exhausting. Another thing to consider in the summer is the timing of the golden hours. In June, this can be as early as 4.30am and as late as 10.30pm leading to some very long days. So let's move on to some places to shoot. Given its vast size and plethora of sites, we cannot cover everything in this short video. However, we're going to give you an idea of some of our favourite locations. The Palace of Westminster is one of the world's most iconic locations. It's also one of the most photogenic. Its riverfront position enables wide-angled shots encompassing Westminster Bridge from the south, whilst on the northern side of the Thames in Parliament Square a different range of views are available. The sunlight falls on the waterfront side of Parliament at dawn and early morning and sets behind the building at the end of the day. Either of these classic shots can be made from the southern side of the Thames. Be aware though, you cannot use tripods in the area near the London Eye. There are no such restrictions on the other side of Westminster Bridge in front of St Thomas's Hospital. During the late afternoon, on sunny days, the light is great for close-up and wide shots from Parliament Square. Look for lots of little details and framing devices such as statues and trees. The London Eye is a more modern London icon that can be photographed from the embankment on the north side of the river for sweeping views. This view is best in the late afternoon and early evening. Heading to the south side of the river allows you to get abstract shots and details of the futuristic pods. Another famous London location is of course Tower Bridge. This iconic place can be tricky to shoot. From the southern side of the Thames by London City Hall, it is possible, at the right time of year, to get shots of the sun rising behind the bridge. Again, there is a tripod restriction on this part of the waterfront, so evening shots are better done from the other side of the bridge, but still on the south side. My personal favourite location, however, is from the north side in front of the Tower Hotel. Here, there is a statue of a woman swimming with a dolphin 
that makes a perfect framing device for the bridge. There is again a tripod restriction as it's private land. From a pond tower bridge you can capture both the ever-changing skyline of the city and the magnificent shard on the south side of the river. Take the western side of the bridge to the base of either of the towers. Here you can get great shots of both the shard and the constantly evolving skyline of the city. Early morning will give you the golden light falling on both, whilst late afternoon and the early evening can see the sunset over the Thames. Blue hour is a great time to shoot both locations. The city lighting is spectacular and I've not found any tripod restrictions on the bridge itself. It's best to tuck yourself into an area beside one of the towers in order to avoid restricting the pavement. The city is the square mile of London's financial district. There are numerous spectacular views both wide and close to be had in a wander through the city. It's best shot at weekends when the place becomes deserted, allowing for a more relaxed wander through the streets. Ultramodern architecture sits beside centuries-old buildings creating dramatic juxtapositions. It's a great place to wander aimlessly with a camera. Lighting can be tricky here because of the shade in the narrow streets, but you can use these shadows to your advantage. Canary Wharf, London's new financial district, rose out of the derelict docks in the early 90s. Building here is incessant and the skyline is constantly changing. Shooting on Canary Wharf can be an issue for two reasons. Firstly, there is so much architecture packed together. And secondly, as it's private land, there is an army of overzealous security guards, all of whom having different definitions of professional cameras. A better option is to shoot from the southern side of the river along the Thames Walk in Rotherhive. Here you can get a full-on cityscape of Canary Wharf with the Thames passing in front. In the evening the district is spectacularly lit and can lead to some stunning shots. Royal London is of course typified by Buckingham Palace. At most times of the day here it's hellishly busy with tourists. However, coming early, just after dawn, has two advantages. Firstly, no tourists. Secondly, it faces northeast into the rising sun, making the light particularly good. In the spring, the flower beds surrounding the palace on Constitution Hill make for great foreground interest. A brisk walk from the palace is Hyde Park. The park itself is not particularly photogenic, but the Albert Memorial can make for some great shots. Like Buckingham Palace, it's best to visit in the early morning to avoid the crowds and to get the good light. The West End is best shot in the blue hour or evening. The neon lights of Piccadilly are an iconic location and running up from there is Theatreland with its well-lit show signs. This is also a good place to shoot the famous London buses and black cabs, the theatres behind making the shots immediately identifiable. London is a vast and infinitely photogenic city and no video can ever do full justice to photography in London. In this video I've tried to give you an idea of some of my favourite and most popular locations and the issues you might face when shooting them. Avoid trying to get everywhere in two days. If you only have a short time there, pick one or two iconic locations and concentrate solely on them. Do this and you will be rewarded with some great shots of this fantastic city. Don't be afraid to shoot the cliché shots, but try stamping your own style on them also. If you've enjoyed this video, you could help us greatly by giving us a like and even a subscription. We've been lucky enough to travel to quite a few cities around the globe, so if you would like a photographer's guide on another city, let us know, and if we've been there, we'll try to make one for you. Thanks for watching, and see you again soon.